Hey everyone, welcome to our latest Trade to Black podcast. I am your host, Shad Dales. Thanks for checking in. What a busy week it was. We were down in Hollywood, Florida for the Benzenga Capital Conference. We shared all kinds of news and rumors as well. Big topic of conversation, needless to say, was rescheduling. So we'll break that all down as well. Coming up, we're going to have Don Murphy on. Mr. Murphy will talk to us about the trip that we had last week in Washington and some of the news that he heard this week. As well, Dan the Chartman comes in to analyze and basically break down all the price action this week. A little light on the sector as a whole, but we'll break down some of the stocks that we are looking at and what we can anticipate heading into next week. So let's welcome in TDR co-host Anthony Varel. Good to see you in person this week in beautiful Hollywood, Florida. Yeah, it was a, it was a good overall conference. Obviously got a uh, little factoid that went viral there um, for a second. I uh, got to sit down with a lot of the top CEOs in the space, get a hold on what's going on in the sector. And I mean, the best thing about it was there was a lot of new money there. I know. Um, talked to a lot of guys that were in private equity that are launching private equity funds and want to get into the cannabis space, um, looking for growth, looking for consolidation, looking for to roll up some assets. Um, it, was, it was good all around. I mean, I commend Patrick and Elliot and Jason, Luke and the team. Um, I'm putting together a, a, a hell of a conference. It was the best conference I've been to since COVID. Um, so it was a, uh, it was a great time. That felt like a top notch best capital conference, uh, for the industry that I've attended, uh, since following and being in this industry for almost four years now, but, uh, Joe oh, Caba, and we got to meet Jane in person. That was a, uh, it was, that was a highlight of the conference as well. Yes. Very probably the nicest uh, person that you'd ever meet with in the overall industry uh, has time for everybody and uh, such a very nice, kind, giving person. But uh, great venue, to say the least. And a uh, shout out to uh, Sardelli's, the Italian steakhouse that you took me to of the three nights that was there. So if you're ever in Fort Lauderdale or Hollywood area, uh, they're not a sponsor of the show. We're not trying to get them on as a sponsor, but that place was unbelievable food wise. And we saw a lot of players in the space at this place, a lot of news and rumors, mergers and acquisitions, topic of conversation, but obviously people can't really share that information with us. But one thing's for sure. There's a lot of companies that want to get into that Florida market. Yeah. 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 Though some of the major players I think will be coming down here pretty soon. Um, I think some of the players probably in the bottom third of the stack yeah. will, will consolidate, maybe get picked up. Um, there's going to be some interesting moves in Florida um, here shortly. Yeah. Speaking of Florida, uh, you and I were talking before we went on the podcast today based on some recent polling numbers. Do um, you want to share maybe some of that stuff with us and what you found? Yeah. I mean, there was, a, there was an article from Marijuana Moment that was published, uh, I think, yesterday in regards to some polling numbers. Um, <clears throat> the poll was easy to poke holes in. Yeah. Um, I think it was about a thousand respondents. It was landlines only, not you, not leveraging cell phones. Um, so that kind of tells you something what's going on with the demographic. But I mean, I think there's one key takeaway here and it's Tom, it's his job to report on everything, whether it's in a positive lens or whether it's in a negative lens. And I mean, I see him catching a lot of heat because people think that he's putting out like propaganda or like putting out nefarious articles in the sector. I mean, Tom reports a ton of positive news. Yeah, yeah. And just because what he's reporting on one day doesn't align with what we want to hear or what we might think is fact, it's not against him. He's a news outlet. Um, yeah. I think that poll was very flawed. I think that poll obviously wasn't aligned with what we wanted to hear and what we think the outcome is going to be. But I'd rather him report on that or versus not because we, we need to know what's out there. Um, the, Florida's polling above the 60% threshold, I mean, with a lot of the polls that matter. Um, we have the data, um, we're gonna get there, it's gonna be a volatile ride, but I would prefer to see some of these janky polls and some of these janky like data outfits that are out there just so we understand what's going on from like a 360 point of view. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with reporting stuff that just that, that we don't fully align with. Yeah, I think you're bang on with that, Cleve. Uh, landlines equal old people. I don't know too many it's people true. under 50 that have a landline. Uh, you don't see that too often, but yeah. But to your point about uh, people wanting to know or like they have a certain narrative that they want to believe in when it comes to online, 
gives you a great example. And I know we've talked about this a couple of weeks ago in the past as well, that uh, proper journalism just seems like a thing of the past. Uh, but when you actually do have it, it's not a hit piece. It's not swaying one way or the other. It's just calling it like it is. But um, got to keep an open mind, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I prefer seeing both sides of the coin. Yeah, I don't 100%. need to see just positive news, rainbows and butterflies, because I mean, in this sector, it's not all rainbows and butterflies. Um, Jungle Java says it best. Investors need to recognize that Tom does not give a shit about stocks, facts, and news only. Absolutely. That's fine. That 100% is percent correct. Yeah, there is nothing wrong with that. He is a news outlet covering the policy of the cannabis industry, whether it's negative or positive. And there is nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You got some t-shirts as well. We did. Stand did. up and show up that this, shirt uh, proper. I picked up this uh, this shirt from uh, the MSO gang with uh, <laughs> meeting with uh, Mackenzie, Noah, and Dan. Yeah, um, on site. I didn't get the limited edition MSOX one, um, but the MSOS one I will uh, gladly rock in the meantime. Incremental steps, as you always say, right? Just get one T-shirt, and we'll get eventually get another one. But uh, yeah. Alex Stetson writes that tweet went viral. Would you end up finishing? How many impressions? That was up to one hundred twenty thousand when I checked yesterday. Yeah, it was about one hundred twenty-five thousand. All right. Well, listen, what a trip it was last week in Washington. When we got to Florida this week, I think we uh, couldn't even go more than two minutes as somebody's stopping by saying they love the work, love the content we produce, that video that we produced this week and uh, pushed out on Monday at four o'clock, the Senator video, uh, got a lot of great feedback. Uh, and it was all courtesy of this man that comes up right now in our podcast. None other than our good friend from Washington. Let's bring in Mr. Don Murphy. Good day, sir. And how are you? Good day to you. Uh, good morning, gentlemen, and um, How's it going? welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah. Thank you, by the way, on behalf of Anthony and I, and I think a lot of our viewers very much appreciated just the access that we had and the really, you know, the only way this content is going to make sense is through you. And you knew exactly what building, what floor, what hallway, what time to be at at all given times. And a lot of the people that we ran into was uh, courtesy of you. But that's, uh, you know, an incredible day and experience. We're actually going to be coming out with a little behind the scenes documentary on Sunday night featuring you and uh, just recapping the day it was. But that is what you do on a daily basis. And I got to admit, man, you're like, got the engine of a 16 year old like it's go 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 i think we counted about thirty thousand steps we made in one day but you know it was uh a busy day to say the least right yeah and that's why i come home and lay on the couch and, and, <laughs> and whatever and whatever my wife wants to watch on tv is fine I just i'm sure usually fall asleep before it's over yeah that's for sure but uh all in all i know that we you and i spoke earlier this morning about having you on here this morning but uh um what do you think, like, as far as next steps, like we, that, that was great content that we were able to produce. I know you were speaking with Elizabeth Warren, um, earlier this week and had mentioned that it was too bad that we got a, uh, we missed her, but, um, you know, I think the next steps is for us to get back out to Washington and next steps is probably to have some actual sit down interviews in some of these offices with them. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you for taking me up on the rather flippant offer when I said, look, you guys just have to be here. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, okay. Uh, and it was great to have some friendlies around, right? You know, I'm usually there kind of by myself talking to members and to have, I won't say it was an entourage, but basically we did clog up the hallway because we had yeah. some former NFL players, stars there, Ricky Williams and, and Jim McMahon. And so they drew a crowd. So it was, we, we had some nice bait. Uh, for sure. I did talk to Elizabeth Warren yesterday and I said, geez, a whiz, I see you like three, four times a day. And then like you guys show up with a camera and, you, and she's nowhere to be found. So she was that's the one just, person, that's she was the the one of person I wanted to get in front of. It was, uh, well, yeah, you come back. She, and, and you, by you the know. way, speaking of, uh, speaking of Senator Warren, did you have any dialogue with her in regards to the stable coin bill and potentially yeah. safe getting attached to it? Cause I mean, she's no. one uh, she's one person that I do know is very outspoken in favor of cannabis and very outspoken to the flip side of the crypto industry in terms of regulation. Yeah, no, we, we did not. We did not talk about that. I, I will point out, uh, and I sort of did online, that um, the, the two 
lead sponsors of SafeCoin are both co-sponsors of Safe Banking. So okay. the, the, the concern that one might have, oh, we can't put Safe Banking in this bill because it's their bill and they're against it. And yeah, that's, that is not a problem. That is a hurdle that is cleared already. Uh, so okay. that's good news. The other thing is, and I've said this all along, Safe Banking, the good news is nobody cares. The bad news is nobody cares. And, and yeah. so this can go in a bill a must pass bill, some other bill, stable coin or FAA or whatever. Yeah. And no one's, it's not a hill to die on. They don't care enough to expend political capital to try to strip it out, kill it, whatever. Uh, and quite honestly, it's popular enough that nobody's going to like go against popular support and opinion for the yeah. purpose of stripping out safe banking. It's just not worth it. Hmm. On the same uh, on the same note, we know we saw Chuck break out hope again yesterday. How <laughs> should we interpret this? Um, uh, I, I, I think mean, that's I've obviously good. got my views on it, but we'd love to hear your take on him whipping that out again. Oh, I think we might have lost him for a second. Don, you there? Oh, there you are. I'm go here. ahead, Don. I don't know if you got all the code. Go ahead. No, I got the question. Senator Rosen up for re-election in a battleground state. She, in theory, needs all the help. She, and in addition, the activist crowd who is unhappy about safe banking, unhappy about Schedule 3, needs something. Hope is the social justice aspect of whatever they're going to get through. And to give it okay. to her, to put in at this late uh, hour, look, it's a, a co-sponsored bill with Dave Joyce on the House side and AOC. So you don't get any more bipartisan than that. I haven't seen the bill actually be posted yet, so I don't know if there's any other sponsors on the Senate side uh, or not. Honestly, I don't know, and it doesn't so, matter. So, from an optics, so so from an optics perspective, it, it almost increases our chances. Of, yeah, you don't uh, uh, you don't you don't bring this out. You don't bring this out right now uh, on the eve of, in my opinion, safe banking passing. Yeah, uh, yeah, and and not give her that little victory to go home with yeah interesting yeah i know we talked uh a little bit about you know what it when the event like the dea you know if they were to in some ways get, let's face it a lot of people that we found in washington when we were there last week it's like nobody really wants to put their name behind it even the people in favor for safe banking it's like they're approving a number of other bills where they're just kind of bearing this sort of thing do you see that same thing happening with the DEA, I know I asked you that question. I know you said if we do get a pushback, that's actually a good thing. But can you maybe elaborate a little bit more on that and what you meant by that? Well, uh, yesterday and, and all around the 420 festivities, we've got a whole group of progressive advocates, cannabis advocates who are here. And they're walking the halls and they're doing press conferences. They're not happy about Schedule 3. So hmm. there's no reason for a progressive senator or member to right. go out on a limb and say, yeah, schedule three. Look, they talk to you in the hall and they said, look, it's the it's not everything I want. It's the best we can do. Let's take it. Right. Now, they don't want to stand up in front of a, a, a crowd of angry progressives and say that. So they sort of keep quiet. They send a letter to the DEA. They want to move it. But look, the DEA. They don't care about senators. And the proof no. in the pudding was when Merrick Garland came before the Senate Appropriations CGS Committee. That's the yep. subcommittee that deals with his funding. And he basically, you know, gave a, a shove to one of the Republican senators, failed to send a letter a year later. She asked for a letter about, you know, some issue. He didn't answer. He didn't answer, didn't answer. And she really, you know, got her back up about it. But it proved to me, like, if you're not going to do the simplest thing to yes. ingratiate yourself with a senator on the, the Appropriations Committee, you yeah. don't care. You do not care what a handful of pro uh, prohibitionists have to say in a letter. You just don't. It's all it's all for so, sure. All so, so, so speaking about these activists being up on the Hill saying that Schedule 3 is not the right thing or it's not enough. I mean, do we have a messaging problem? Because mm. last night, Jesse Ventura was on CNN on prime time. And in the middle of the segment, literally interjects Aaron Burnett and goes, and the real reason I'm here to talk, I'm, the real reason I'm here to talk is cannabis. And then he gets the floor for three minutes. 
and just goes on a rant on how the DEA shouldn't be the ones making the decision where it was a complete missed opportunity for him to talk about the HHS recommendation that came out. It was positive. They're taking a science-backed, data-driven approach to this. There's 255 pages that are validating the rescheduling recommendation. He could have said so many positive things for the sector, but sit there to. Ch but he chose to sit there and just say the DEA shouldn't be handing down this decision. Did he Who say the why? DEA to be doing that? No, he just said that the he the, the the DEA doesn't have the right or shouldn't be doing this. Like I feel like as an industry, like we do have certain people that are pushing the right message, but at large, we kind of have a messaging problem. Hundred percent, we do. And we all look. We, we all agree this shouldn't be the uh, the responsibility of the law enforcement arm, right? It should be the decision by the health uh, agency, HHS. Yeah. We have this is not a a half uh, a half a glass, right? We're we're not. We have nearly a full glass here. We yeah. we should be very optimistic. We shouldn't be pointing out, oh, we didn't get this. Oh, we didn't get that. What we are getting now is historic. Is it everything I want? No, but it's no, way more than it. we've ever had. And quite honestly, we don't have a messaging problem. We have an advocate problem. Yeah, the, we do. The, the people that are loudest that get the microphone are the people that get the microphone. They're not the industry. They're not so much me. They're not people who are fairly reasonable and been at this a long time and appreciate the incremental reforms we are getting. Right. Look, yeah. I am not Joe Biden's biggest supporter by yeah. any stretch, but if and when schedule three comes down, I'll have to give credit where credit is due. It, it should be more, but it's not. But we should take the win and live to fight another day. So, yeah, Ventura Absolutely. should have pointed out the, the victories that we're having here instead of among the, you know, the, the downside, the little yeah. bit of a downside. I almost get yeah. the impression that what he said and what you're sharing, Anthony, it's like he fits that same narrative as like, you know, a lot of the uh, advocates that are there for 420 and don't like the idea of rescheduling. It sounds like it's the same kind of message. And are they going to take Jesse serious right now? I, 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 I doubt it. He was talking about running for VP with RFK um, and a potential like presidential bid down the road. Like advocates can sit here and shout full blown legalization and descheduling or bust. But you're never going to get that. That is yeah. literally never going to happen. No, that is not reality. The reality of it is, all all the branches of government are speaking about cannabis. The executive office is saying it almost biweekly um, to, to to the public. Like we're on the precipice of like historic reform, and now they're just asking for more. It's never going to happen the way that they want it. That that that's just fact. Don, you must be so proud as we sit here and go back and forth to sit here and say, now we get it. We've been there. It's like the aha moment. But like, you know, yeah. when we were in Washington last week, you're right. It's just like, there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. And there is just a lot of senators, congressmen, congresswomen that have no really understanding of the difference between rescheduling, safe. But the only way that you can continue to do that is to continue to have the conversation. But um, interesting. That's and they don't they they don't have to yet because it's not front and center on yeah, the plate, course. right? We have we have multiple wars going on. We have a potential yeah. another potential coup in the house. I mean, come on, they're just and look, I one of the but how much I, of an effort like you keep hearing that over and over and over, but like how much of a priority? Like just get it through. Get it like I it's it's does it really take up a lot of time? And like again, I look at from a business aspect. Um, what this could do for the economy, like the social equity aspect too. Like, I just feel like, yes, there are larger things to basically cover off and focus on. Uh, but at the same time, it's just like, it's not a big priority for them. So why make it, you know, such a nuisance for them and just let people want what they need. And I think they'd be shocked as to how much this actually would benefit, uh, the voter, um, like when it comes to the election and most importantly too, just the overall economy and what it could do for the American economy. Well, look, I think they spent the last 18, 20 months figuring out, hey, we got the votes, but this is a problem, uh, floor time and all the other things, optics, right? When you're doing very little in Congress, and one of the few things you do is a cannabis banking bill, that that lends itself to one party or the other using it against you. Yeah. Uh, 
remember when the, uh, there was a jobs bill, there was a COVID relief bill, and it said cannabis in there like 37, 87 times. And yeah. that they made a point of that. So don't give them the, op the, the opposition, the opportunity to use this against you, which is why I believe right now or very soon, we're going to end up soon, sorry. Um, I know that's a trigger word. Soon, uh, yeah. we'll, we'll end up with safe banking and hope to make Rosen look good, right? And uh, we'll end up with it in a must-pass safe uh, uh, stable coin bill, FAA bill. Boom! You'll wake up one day, it'll be on the president's desk, and you'll be like, "Wow, that was yeah. cool. you know why, you, why didn't we think of that first? So if that scenario does play out, which I, I think is fairly feasible um, at this point, does that accelerate Schedule Three coming out of the DEA? No, in any no. way or no, uh, they don't have that. that that's not a binary. No, right, really. no, no, no. And look, no. And I will say this and I sort of push back. I've had a few people uh, say, look, the DEA doesn't care. What, what makes you think they care what anybody says? I get it. They do not care what any senators or prohibitionists have to say. What we have to say don't care. They're not watching this with all due respect. But uh, the attorney general, if you remember, Trump, President Trump had multiple attorney generals, didn't like him, fired him, didn't like him, fired him. Nixon, same thing, right? Fired the attorney general. If the attorney general doesn't do what the president White House wants. You know, they serve at the pleasure, right? So that's a good point. Do, do you think that the White House is going to find out about Schedule 3 at the very moment we do? There's nope. no way. There's no nope. way. So if you if you believe that, you know, it's an election year, politics are at play, politics are at play and everything. Uh, if you believe that, then why wouldn't you believe that the White House would choreograph the announcement, would have it announced when they want? Look, there's five yeah. days in a week. You know, you think the president can't say, hey, announce it on a Friday when members are leaving so there's no you know, noise from Congress so we can own this ourselves? Absolutely. So, you know, yeah. when people ask my opinion about when do I think it's going to happen and they want to know what time of day, yeah, the, the best I can do is say, well, let me tell you what I would do, because this bill, uh, D, sorry, uh, Schedule 3 does not appeal to the progressive side of, of the president's party. And in order to sell this, he's going to have to bury it so that the White House can run its own narrative about exactly what this is and what this isn't. And he's yeah. going to talk about this being way more than just medical, right? He's already, they've already said they've, you know, they've done all these things to change marijuana policy. Of course, they've done nothing. If they right. can do that and get away with it, and they will because progressive advocates won't, won't say a thing once this is done. Yeah. Right? yeah. They won't be on CNN saying the president is lying about this stuff. Absolutely not yeah. going to happen. Friday morning here on the live, uh, Trade a Black podcast. I'm your host, Shad Dales, Anthony Varel, and Washington correspondent. Well, cannabis space Don Murphy joins us. Can we say TDR correspondent? I'd love to say that. <laughs> no, no, look, no, no, because you guys are the correspondents. You've been there, right? Now that you've been there, you don't don't hang that on me. And yeah. we'll be back. We'll be yeah. back very soon. Yeah, that's for sure. Smash that like button and as well, leave lots and lots of comments. Last question I'll bring up Anthony's tweet. I'm sure you saw that earlier this week pertaining to the HHS and their legal opinion from the OLC. Um that's just further clarification. I know you're focusing a lot, obviously, on the safe banking initiative, amongst other things. But did you have much take or feedback based on just uh, some of the stuff that, you know, could deem as being positive and further, uh, I guess, uh, backing of, you know, why the HHS is indeed uh, wanting to uh, reschedule cannabis? Well, look, it's just one more data point in our in our favor. Yep. Right. That, that's that's what it is. And until most people are not going to be satisfied until the announcements made and many of them won't be satisfied until, you know, the the the, the period of, um, uh, you know, commentary period, comment period for for the public is expired and the rules are set. And this could be sometime down the road. Uh, but it is what it is. These are yeah. these are more than baby steps at this point. Yeah. This is this is all very good news for us. I would much rather be us than Sam. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, absolutely. 
great experience. Great having lunch at the Capitol uh, Hill Club, too. What a history in that building. Uh, love seeing some of the pictures and walls of President Reagan. Man, if those walls could talk, you imagine some of the, uh, you know, past conversations that have gone on in that room. But, uh, you know, as much as they call it the quote unquote swamp, Washington, D.C., there's some pretty impressive monuments in history there, to say the least. But uh, all in all, what a huge education uh, it was for us for the day and the half that we're there. But most importantly, exciting to share that we will be making um, probably like a monthly commitment moving forward to see you. And, you know, I think we want to get a lot of feedback from our audiences to like, what are some of the next questions and angles that we need to come up with each and every time, but we wouldn't do that without you. So again, thank you. And I appreciate you uh, logging on here this morning. Well, you're welcome. And just, just think about how much more you're going to be able to accomplish for your viewers once you're there the second time, you know, and the third yeah. time and the fourth time you, you know, you're going to, learn more, know more, know your way around better uh, as time goes on. And you'll be very valuable to your viewer, your viewers, for sure. I think it'll probably end up over time. I'm seeing all these people like count me in in the next uh, DC trip, writes E. Mills. We probably will start bringing 20, 30, 40 <laughs> people over time if we give them enough uh, headway time as to when we're going. But I'm sure people will like to be part of that initiative. But he was there. He was actually there this week. Was um, he? Okay. Yeah. Pretty sure that's Eric who follows me on Twitter. He's with uh, holistic industries and in, uh, in, ah, in PA. Gotcha. Oh yeah. Yeah. He was there. Yep. Yep. Gop was awesome too. Got in his car and drove five, six hours to Washington. And uh, you know, I think he was uh, loving every single minute and stuff that he learned too, but a big prop out to him. And uh, obviously uh, Mitch, our camera guy that did a phenomenal job too, but listen, well, let's the, look, the other thing is, there will be members and their staff who will see your, um, your, yeah. you know, and they will like it. And you, you uh, appeal to a very niche audience. Yeah. And, you know, micro targeting is the way of the future, especially uh, in politics, right? And 100%. so th there will be members who will seek you out and want to be on this show. Yeah. And that's a very good thing. And there's, there's, you know, it's obvious to me why. <laughs> Midnight writes and actually a funny comment. I won't say that in front of you, Don, but uh, why not? Five hours goes by with a fat roll. <laughs> not in the car. Not in the car. Exactly. Very good yeah. point, Don. Yeah, yeah. Uh, listen, enjoy the weekend. Tell your family we say hi. It was great meeting your wife in Washington as well. And uh, we'll uh, keep in touch with you and hopefully have you on the next week or two again. Okay. We'll see you then. All thanks. right. Thanks, Don. Yeah. Um, all right. That was good. Always great to uh, see uh, Mr. Murphy and talk to Mr. Murphy, but that was uh, interesting. Some of the feedback that he had, but uh, um, rather interesting as well for him to share just some of the stuff with regards to some of the protesters regarding 420 that were in there that don't really like the idea of rescheduling. Uh, they want it fully descheduled, which I get, but yeah, I miss. Hey, I mean, so do I. I. I want it fully descheduled as well. Yeah, but it's not going to happen. Yeah. All right. We've had somebody patiently waiting for us in the background. That's almost 28 minutes into the podcast. So let's give up. That wraps up is segment number one. And now it's time for Dan, the chart man, the chart man every Friday. All right, Mr. Producer. Yeah. Happy Friday. Good to see you. How are things? And I know it's been about a couple of weeks since we saw you last. Yeah, glad to be back and glad you had a good trip. Yeah, it was definitely a learning curve. I don't know if you got a chance to see some of the content we produced, but uh, yeah, they call it the swamp for a reason. But uh, when you're there, man, it's uh, crazy as to you try to approach these, you know, public figures that are there for the people. But uh, that's not the feeling you get when you approach <laughs> these people. That's for sure. But uh Anyway, uh, happy Friday. Good to have you on. And, uh, you know, I think for the most part, a relatively light volume week for the overall sector. I'm sure you probably got that takeaway, too. Yeah, I mean, we've had we've had a lot of weakness in the broader market with all the headlines in the Middle East and, and all that. And really, the Nasdaq currently is still in a bit of free fall. So a good sign that, you know, we're not at the low of the week at the moment, uh, although, uh, you know, there's a lot of work to still be done on the charts for the bulls to regain their control. Yeah. All right. Let's jump into the first stock that we want to look at is CGC Canopy. And let's have a look as to what we're seeing. 
Sure thing. So, uh, you know, we got a nice little daily bounce underway and it was kind of, you know, Anthony's tweet really moved things. You moved markets more than I've ever moved markets. I, I, so I, that was not my intention. I didn't buy anything ahead of that tweet. I didn't sell anything ahead of that tweet. I didn't buy anything after the tweet. I literally saw the fucking God candle on MSOS and I'm like, oh God, what did I do? Yeah. I was like, I was like, this is, this, this was not my intention. Um, yeah. But yes. So yeah, we had we had the U.S. side react to you in that tweet, and then the yeah. next day we had the higher listed name CGC ACB put in a big day. And so you know the pattern we call this a stair step pattern, where it's just every single day is a lower high, and this is CGC doing that for you know seven days in a row. And you, it just you know it's a simple pattern where you break that pattern, you break the high of the previous day, six ninety two. And you get significant follow through just to, you know, the balancing of the scales between supply and demand just shifting enough. But, you know, if this is going to be, you're looking at the weekly chart and saying, okay, if we're going to set a weekly oh, yeah. higher low, we really want it to be off those EMAs there. And if we're going to be confident that a weekly higher low is set, we need to confirm a daily uptrend. And to confirm yeah. a daily uptrend, we got to top out on this bounce, wherever that's going to be, the, the higher, the better, obviously. And then we got to set the higher low and higher high. So this is, you know, just step one. Daily bounce. We got to top out, form a daily higher low, get a daily higher high, and then we could say, "All right, the weekly is now starting to shape up and be a, a bit more favorable for the bulls again." So it's a nice start, but we're not going to get you know the information until next week. And of course, because you know I, I said recently in a video, this this sector retail participants love to paint themselves in a corner where they get hyped up on news, and if it doesn't come, it's almost like a you know, we have a big negative reaction and that's the case now with this, you know, 420 in April and all that going on. Yeah. And so we have to be cautious, you know, is if we don't get any news in, in April, is that going to lead to another leg of downward pressure? And so uh, bulls, essentially, I can say that the low of this week is going to be a really important support level for all of these names, CGC, ACB, MSOS next week. All right. Uh, some of our viewers are asking for Aurora. Uh, so let's bring that chart up. So the same thing in the sense that we got the, the two-day move over the last two days. There's a ton of resistance. Your bears were really defending 745 here. We topped out at 745, 44, 43, 37, just a ton of resistance there. And that's still a bit of a ways ahead here. So again, same thing. We got to, I'm assuming we're going to set a lower high compared to that level if we don't get uh, any headlines. And then we must confirm the daily trend change and get over that level for the weekly chart to be setting a higher low. We went straight up. The weekly's trying to set the higher low and the daily uptrends need to confirm next week for the weekly higher lows to be set. All right. Uh, I was going to jump into a couple of the American plays, but we've had a couple of people just reach out to us again. Um, Village Farms. Um, That's been holding up well. That's been holding up well. I've been, uh, it doesn't have enough volume for me to trade it personally. You know, it's average daily volume here. We're looking at, you know, $2 million a day, which is not significant, but Again, you look at, you know, let's just do a quick comparison. The weekly time frame, retracement size, how much of the move did we give back? VFF gave back just under 50%. And you look at a name like CGC, how much did we give back? We gave back more like 62%. So right. it held its gains better. And uh, it's, you know, you could make the argument that it's attempting a weekly bull flag. Again, that being said, you know, I've got to see these lower highs break. We topped out at 157. We set a lower high at 145, another one at 140. So if we don't break 140 on this bounce, it's still a daily downtrend. But uh, we can say it's low volume, but it is holding on a bit better than the other higher listed names. Man, here comes the army of SNDL. They want to see that chart. <laughs> so we just did a weekly comparison there. So let's just do it here as well. So weekly back. I mean, we gave back like 65% of the move. That's that's more than the bulls want to see. And so what that does is creates the space for the potential, you know, again, absent a headline, we could just tighten up within this range for a very long time. And same deal. We're trying to set the weekly higher low off the EMAs. We've got to confirm the daily uptrend. We're not even bouncing it on the daily. Huh. Uh, so that's a disappointment there. I mean, this volume is still you know, $2 million traded today. It's still very low volume. And we're not seeing the bounce right now that CGC and ACB are seeing. So we could say in the last few days, this week, there's relative weakness compared to those other names. And uh, we have to see that change. We got to see the volume pick back up. We got to see a bounce, a higher, low, higher, high. And the fact that we don't even have the daily bounce going yet 
is showing us that it's a step behind those other names we just went over. Yeah. Uh, one company that grabbed a lot of attention last week, a um, little disappointed amongst investors regarding their earnings was Tilray. So what have we seen this week? Because uh, definitely there was a lot of uh, attention that was grabbed amongst investors after that uh, release was announced. Yeah, it's just a, a dark cloud hanging over it where yeah. you know the bulls haven't been able to do anything. Same deal, you know, to last two days, CGC and ACB are doing that, and TLRY is stuck in the mud. And yeah. uh, you know, it was the same thing. I was a big OGI fan because of the relative strength, and then we had dilution news and it wiped out that relative yeah. strength, just instantly gone. So when you get that bad news, uh, it's almost like a hangover, you know, with TLRY is hung over right now. There is a bunch of support at 160, but again, the fact that we're back to the low is a massive red flag. I mean, that would be like CGC and ACB and all these other names dropping another 30% plus. So uh, again, the weekly chart the, at this point, the best case for the bulls is hold 160. But, you know, without news, we are just, you know, go, it's going to be a while before we get back to that level unless yeah. we see a headline to help. Yeah. Um, Jungle Java, who's, uh, like I said, probably the nicest person in this space. Uh, she asks for two, if we could actually do one is Terrasend and the other one is the cannabis. So we'll start with the Terrasend. So this one's just your standard weekly tightening range. And again, you know, I, po I point this out, this pattern, because it's the most common pattern that I trade in markets. I trade this on the two minute time frame when I'm day trading the weekly time frame. I mean, right now, Jets, the airliner ETF has a a three month pattern for three years forming this tightening range. And so this is just the same thing where we've got, you know, the low, the higher low, the lower high and bulls must hold 150 to keep this range tightening up. And again, you know, with, without the headline, we can easily tighten up here for another few weeks, but yeah, uh, this, this tightening pattern must break bullish because if it doesn't, we're going to go back and revisit these lows. So all about 150 longer term support on the weekly chart. Yeah. Make sure to smash that like button, everyone. As you're here on a Friday with Trade Black with Dan the Chart Man, leave comments below. Thanks for obviously the feedback regarding some of the charts that you want to cover. And the last one we'll bring up is the cannabis company holdings before we get into crypto. Forget the ticker off my head here. CBSTF. CBSTF. One moment. My CBSTF. Bangle. Yes, relative weakness. I mean, you got to call it like it is. The fact that we just a month ago dropped down to fresh lows when nothing else did easily puts it as one of the weakest names. If anything is going to shift, we must hold 21 cents and break 38 cents. If yeah. we do not break 38 cents, it's just a slow bleed penny stock. And, you know, you, I look at these penny stock charts. I traded four years of penny stocks before I moved on to, to bigger things in my early trading career. And this, you know, this chart just screams, I don't know anything about the fundamentals of this company, but when I see a penny stock that looks like this, it tells me be cautious of dilution, be cautious yeah. of share structure, convertible debt, all these things that just lead to penny stocks, slow bleeding to be down 90% plus and never recover. Yeah. Not saying it won't ever recover. I'm just saying that when I see this chart, it's like PTSD. Like I, I remember what these charts do in penny stocks and it is not a good place to be as a long-term holder. What do you think was the turning point for you to move on, say, from penny stocks to like where you are today? Uh, capital just, you know, yeah. increased my capital size and did that through the, the cannabis sector in 2013, 2014. There was a run where, you know, all these cannabis penny stocks went up a thousand percent. And so it was easy to just be in the right place at the right time and, you know, have my capital go up 500 percent. And now, okay, the the one to three percent move on Twitter stock or whatever I was trading in 2014, 15, that's now worth it to me. Whereas if I've got a ten thousand you know dollar position, one percent, like okay, hundred bucks, I'm not going to complain. But uh, you need you need the, the the larger capital size and also day trading. Yeah. You know, pattern day trader, you have to have over twenty five thousand uh, dollars federal regulation, and so that hinders a lot of people's trading until they get over that benchmark as well. Yeah. Uh, we're going to fast forward now to BTC Bitcoin for our last chart of the day. So first, I just want to highlight Bitcoin is doing everything the NASDAQ is doing. It's doing yeah. it a little bit stronger short term, but I just posted this on Twitter. You know, let's just pull up side by side charts here. We got NVDA on the left and we've got Bitcoin on the right. And they're extremely similar where we have an all time high, a failure to break the all time high. And now we're testing weekly EMA 12 and then Bitcoin all time high failure to break it 
testing weekly EMA 12. We have a much better bounce on Bitcoin off of that level this week. And there's some relative strength short term the last two days in Bitcoin, but it's very much doing the same thing that the semi, I mean, the semiconductors are correlated in NASDAQ and the big Bitcoin is correlated in NASDAQ in my opinion. And so it's just, you know, they're, they're doing very similar things. So worth keeping an eye on it, but the, the benefit that the bulls have in Bitcoin coming off of that headline, essentially we had the headline last night where, you know, Middle East, all that going on and everything flush, you know, futures down one and a half percent in the NASDAQ, Bitcoin dumped to 59. The big difference is Bitcoin bulls defended this support pretty adamantly where, you know, 59 to 60.7. That's a little range that we now have. We bounced off of it. We held it. We held it. And now we've held it two more times. And so that's just essentially bulls gaining a little bit of confidence. Like, no, we're playing defense. We're defending our line in the sand where the NASDAQ bulls failed to defend any kind of line. So there is relative strength in that regard. The weekly, like if we keep closing over weekly EMA 12, there's nothing to worry about bigger picture. And we held it back here and we're now holding it at least this week. Again, when we got a few more days, but looking good to hold it. Bitcoin is positioned well if the NASDAQ yeah. can put in a fear bottom and get yeah. a couple yeah. day bounce going. And right now, Bitcoin is just looking over its shoulder like, come on, NASDAQ, you know, help yeah. me out here. And it's a solid move. And, you know, it's just, I think if we can get a, another leg up, let's see, the most important resistance for me, this 12 hour, uh, we're making some progress there as well. I'm looking up at 67,000. So if we can get back over 67,000, that would be a pretty big win into next week. But we've got to see the NASDAQ. I mean, as I speak here, NASDAQ is down at the low of the day, still yeah. in free fall. There is no support at this point, And that mm. has to change. Interesting. 67,000. Remember that number, right? All right. Uh, this has been great as usual, every single Friday, as usual, people can find you online at your website again is checkguys.com. And can follow you on Twitter at Chart Guys. Any workshops that they can sign up just by going to the website too, correct? Yeah, we got a free course, intro to technical analysis and tons of free content. Just use our search feature on our website and you'll get, you know, if you search oversold bounces, whatever, you'll get videos, articles, eBooks, all this stuff. So it's lots of uh, resources to check out for sure. Good stuff. And as usual, grateful to have you join us every single Friday and uh, appreciate it. And we'll catch up with you uh, next week again, okay? All right. Have a great weekend, guys. All right. Thanks, thanks Dan. Have a good Appreciate your time. Always good to get his insight and feedback. But um, yeah, I think overall, just uh, light for the week uh, in volume. But um, yeah, be interesting. Yeah, but there's a lot of stuff. I mean, he's right. I mean, the NASDAQ is kind of in free fall. I mean, you've got geopolitical tensions rising. Um, the Middle East looks like it's a powder keg right now. I mean, there's a lot going on uh, <coughs> other than just the capital markets. And Anthony Burrell <laughs> putting out tweets and dictating how the industry is going to perform. How's that? Not feel? What I'm trying to do. It's not what I'm <laughs> I know to you're do. not. It's not what I'm um, to do every Friday, we usually do mic drops with Guap, but guess what? He is in a honeymoon. He is off to Scotland. So, uh, is this the song? Yes, it is. Guap, if you're listening, buddy, congratulations on your honeymoon. Safe travels over to Scotland. I wonder if he's flying or driving in a Volkswagen Beetle to Scotland. He'll go through like Alaska, uh, Siberia, flying, Russia. Flying in a Volkswagen Beetle. I think Disney made a movie about that. And if there's Didn't anyone they? that can do it, it's Guap. Yeah. Listen, everybody, uh, I think I gotta go take a nap. It's been uh, two long weeks, but- uh, we'll That's be actually back. a pretty good question. Is there value in Planet 13 with 30 stores now in Florida? No. No. <laughs> There's an answer for you. <laughs> I can allude to a lot more on that next week. Um, but no, I don't see that going very well for them in Florida. Yes. Yeah, caught up with Dan, honest. Noah, and the gang. Dan will be joining us again on Monday for MSO Mondays. As usual, make sure to subscribe to our Baked In newsletter. We have had some killer content from our lead financial writer, Bill McNarlin, this week. So if you haven't done so already, please subscribe for a big the newsletter. As usual, please like, like, like this video and leave lots of comments. We got a lot of great feedback this week on the community that we're building. So let's keep the momentum going. The more comments and likes that we receive, the greater chance that this has going viral. In the meantime, enjoy your weekend. Anthony, you as well. And we'll catch up with all of you again on Monday. Take care, everyone. Look forward to it. Hey.
Hey everyone, so what'd you think of the video? Leave your comments below and let us know your feedback. We'd love to hear from you. As usual, subscribe to our channel by clicking on the link here. If you wanna see more videos like this, then click on the link here and click on that bell for all notifications. Because most importantly, we wanna know your feedback because we wouldn't be here without you. Thanks for watching everyone.